What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we are gonna be building this Apollo Server v4 GraphQL API with error handling. It's gonna be an API that has a set of books inside of it, and we're gonna be able to get the book by author and also get the book by ID. When we get a book by an author that exists, for example, there's a Cooper Codes book, we can send in a query and it will give us that book. When we make a call to our API that has an author that doesn't exist, we can try to get the book by a certain author, and then it will say there are no books with that certain author. This is a custom GraphQL error that we created with a custom message here. It will say there are no books with the author Lindsay, and it will even have a custom code books not found. Same thing for grabbing books by the ID. If we grab a book that has an ID that exists, going to give us a book. But there are no books with the ID of four. So if we send that query in, it's going to say there is no book with the ID four, and it's going to have another custom code book not found. Let's get into building this. I'm going to get started by going to an empty folder in Visual Studio Code. I'm then going to make an index.ts file to hold the TypeScript for our server. In order to run our server with TypeScript, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to go into this same folder where you have the index.ts, and then we're going to npm install dash dash save dash dev TypeScript and also at types slash node. So it's saving these two packages as dev dependencies. We then want to go into the folder here and make a tsconfig.json. This is our TypeScript config. Apollo server has a config that they prefer and it's on their website. I'm going to leave a pastebin in the description with this config here. Just paste it in and I'll probably even leave a comment at the top that I'll pin if YouTube lets me do that. We can then go to our package.json that should look something like this. We're going to want to set its type equal to a module. And then we want to set some scripts. So, you know, npm start, npm, you know, compile, stuff like that. And so to compile our code, we're going to want to make an npm compile. And it's going to say TSC, which helps us compile TypeScript code. And so our start script is going to do two things. It's going to first run npm run compile. And then afterward, it's going to run node on whatever the compiled folder is. So for example, dot slash dist slash index dot JS. Then make sure to put a comma at the end of scripts here. And just so you guys know, index.js here is not a typo. What this compile is doing is it's taking our index.ts or our TypeScript file and then giving Node a JavaScript file to run that's pretty much identical to our TypeScript file. Now that we have that done, we can get started coding out our server. So when we build our Apollo server, we're going to need two different things, our GraphQL type definitions, and then also our resolvers, which are going to resolve things like queries, for example. So to make this tutorial super straightforward, I'm not going to do the Apollo server setup initially. I'm going to create our data set, our type defs, and then the resolvers. So we have that all commented here. For the data set, I'm just going to use an array that we can use within our resolvers. So I'm just gonna copy this in here. Books is an array of objects and each object has a title, an author, and an ID. We're using a data set like this so we don't have to set up a database just to show you guys how to use GraphQL errors. We can now define our type defs. We can do this by saying const type defs is equal to backticks pound sign GraphQL helps us get GraphQL syntax highlighting inside of Visual Studio Code. And now we can build out our type definitions. We have a good example of what our book type is going to look like right here. And so we can build it out. We can say type book is going to have three different properties. The first one is a title, which is going to be a string a author, which is going to be a string, and also an ID, which is going to be an integer. Then we're gonna have our queries down here, so we can say type query. The first query I'm going to build is a books query, which is going to return an array of all the different books in our you know, fake database. Then we want to get all the books of a certain author, so we can say get books by author. This is going to get passed in an author as a string, so you know the person that you're searching for, and we're going to return an array of books, so pretty much all the different books that author has written. We can also make a query for get books by ID. The ID is going to be an integer that the user passes in, so they're looking for, you know, a book with the ID of two. And if that book with the ID of two exists, we can just return all that book data there. And this should be book online dirty here. I'm going to start by defining our resolvers here. We can say const resolvers is equal to an object. Within this object, we can define resolvers within certain properties. For example, all of the queries are going to be under the query property, which is going to be equal to an object. Within this object is going to be all of our different resolvers. So I'm going to say books, just a very simple arrow function. It's going to instantly return books. That's what this syntax is doing, is it's saying return books right away. And if you don't remember, books up here is this entire array of books, which is going to make sense because look, we're returning an array of book here. I'm then going to set up very basic queries for our next things here. So we can say get books 
by author. Apollo Server by default has a bunch of different parameters you can access within these functions. The first one is the parent, which we are going to ignore by saying underscore parent. The second parameter is args, which is the arguments that the user passed in, for example, author. And we can make this an arrow function pointing to JavaScript logic. For now, I'm just gonna make this return an empty array all the time. This is because I'm gonna build this functionality in a second. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna copy this code here, make a comma, now we can say get books. It should be get book by ID because we're only asking for one of them. So we can say get book by ID. And this is going to return an empty object just for now, because now I'm going to show you guys how to get this Apollo server started. And so these two functions are just going to be returning nothing for now, because now I'm going to set up the Apollo server. We can start by going to our terminal and saying npm install at Apollo slash server, and then also GraphQL. Now that those packages are installed, we can go to the top and import what we need for them. So we need to import Apollo server from at Apollo slash server, which is the constructor for an Apollo server. And then we're going to import start standalone server, which is a function from at Apollo slash server slash standalone. And so since we already have our type defs and resolvers defined, we can start our server by saying const server is equal to new Apollo server, then pass in an object for our configuration of the server, which is going to need a type defs and then also a resolvers. We can then start our server by saying await start standalone server, pass in the server that we want to start, for example, the one we made on line 50 here, and then we need to pass in some options. For example, we want to tell it to listen to port 4000. This await also returns some things, so we can even say const URL is equal to await to get the URL out of our server. So now we can run npm start to get our server going. And so if you go to localhost 4000, you should see a page like this. We can go to the left and then make a query. For now, I'm just going to query the books and show you guys how we're getting all the different books by you know querying our Apollo server. So we can use the books query and at each book we ask for, it's going to show all the different properties. So you can run the query by pressing this button here. And we can see everything in our database and we're getting a status 200, which means successful response. Right now, our two other queries don't actually do anything, so let's go set those up. To get all the different books from a certain author, one cool thing we can do is use the filter on our books array. So we can say const author books is equal to the books array that we defined dot filter. And this filter is going to return all the different elements that meet the filter condition. So we can say take the current book as we loop through the array, and then we can define the actual condition we want this book to meet. We want the book dot author to be equal to the arguments.author. So if the user is asking for all the books from Cooper Codes, for example, and then the author is Cooper Codes, it's going to add that book to your array. And then that final array is going to be stored in the variable author books here. And so if that author books array has a length that is zero, that means there are no books. And so we can say if author books.length is greater than zero, we can return all the different author books that we found there. Otherwise, we can put into an else statement. We can then throw an error here. So to throw our error, we have to go to the top and import the GraphQL error. So we can import GraphQL error from GraphQL. And then we can go down to where we wanted to throw the error here and we can define our error. So we can say throw new GraphQL error. So this is a constructor for building a GraphQL error. We can make the message of the error initially, for example, there are no books with the author and then whatever the user passed in. So we can say args.author. And just to clarify one thing, our arguments is structured like this, where it's an object and then any of the arguments, for example, the author look like this. So they passed in Cooper codes. That's what arguments looks like. So when you ask for args.author, it's going to show us Cooper codes. We can then pass in some options we want for our GraphQL error. One thing that's very important for us to do is we want to access extensions. And one extension we want to use is we want to give this GraphQL error a certain code. So we can say the code is equal to books underscore not underscore found. And an interesting thing about GraphQL errors is this string here can be accessible by a certain client. So you can imagine if you're making like a search functionalities to search for books, you can make your search say this message to your front end. So for example, there are no books with the author, whatever the person put in. We can now restart our server. So make sure to close it off and then npm start again. I'm going to make a new tab in our little workspace here. I'm going to go to queries and I'm going to make a get books by author query by pressing this. I'm going to pass in an argument, which is going to be the author. I'm going to make the argument Cooper codes. 
And here I'll zoom in. And so now we can ask for all the different fields we want from this. So I'm gonna get the author and the ID and the title of any book it gives us. And so if we search get books by author, it's going to show us the one book by Cooper Codes here. And if I look for someone who doesn't have a book, for example, I can search that and it's going to say there are no books with this certain person. And it's even going to show our custom code on the bottom here, books underscore not underscore found. Now we can go make this similar functionality for get a certain book by an ID. So we can go to the top here and we can find the index of a certain book by saying const book index is equal to books.findindex. This is very similar to what we did before. We're going to loop through all the books and we're going to find the first index where a certain condition is true. So we can take the current book we're looping through and we can find the first book where the book.id is equal to the args.id, so the one that the user passed in. And so if we find no book, what's going to happen is it's going to return negative one instead of like an actual index in our array. So we can say if the book index does not equal negative one, then we know that this book index is real and we can just return that current book. So return books of book index. Then otherwise, we know that we want to throw an error. So we can actually copy our little GraphQL error up here, bring it down. Instead of saying there are no books with a certain author, there is no book with the ID and then whatever the person passed in, the args.id. Instead of books not found, I'm going to say the code is book not found. And so now if we restart our server, Going to make a new tab in our workspace. Then I'm going to make a query for the get book by ID. I'm going to pass in an argument, which is going to be the ID. So initially I'm going to say the ID of two is a book that actually exists. Then for that book we get returned, I'm going to ask for the author ID and title. So everything. So we can run that query and it's going to successfully get us that book. We could even see the first ID as well. But if I try to pass in an ID that doesn't exist in our array, it's going to throw us that GraphQL error saying there is no book with the ID three, for example. And it's also going to give us that custom code saying book not found. And so the nice thing about Apollo server and GraphQL errors is that it's relatively simple to set up where you need to throw your errors throughout your Apollo server. GraphQL gives you way more flexibility than like a regular just, you know, REST API because you get to actually give, you know, certain messages or certain codes that aren't just like 404s, for example, or like error codes. You can make codes and messages that are more descriptive and make your API easier to use. All right, hopefully this video was helpful in getting you a better understanding of how to use errors in a GraphQL and Apollo server. Thanks so much for watching.